Sisyphus in Greek mythology was the founder and king of Ephira. Hades punished him for cheating death twice by forcing him to roll an immense boulder up a hill only for it to roll back down every time it neared the top, repeating this action for eternity. This is a metaphor for the individual's persistent struggle against the essential absurdity of life. How will this relate to Sisyphus Prime? monologue and death, tenebre rosso sangue, pandemonium, Sisyphus fight, death of Sisyphus? I don't know, but let's listen. If you didn't skip that intro, you have my respect. Ha, <laughs> that's a cool effect. So first of all, this old timey piano, but it actually has this like really gentle and sweet melody, almost melancholic, but there's also just this feeling of warmth. You know, when you listen to something that was around in the forties and it's spitting on that gramophone and you get this real feeling of antique and antiquity makes you reflect on a, a time gone by. There's an effect there that happens where we get this boom, 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 almost like it gets stuck, which it wouldn't have not with a record player, but, but I don't think so anyway, but that's, that's super interesting. Even right off the bat, 12 seconds in. It's gonna be a long video, buckle up. <laughs> That's so cool. Bum, bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. That is uh, like a like a church choral hymn. there is this real feeling of, of languishing, of silence, of sadness, of pain, cascading down this feeling of reaching within the depths of the self. There, this like, oh, who am I? What am I? Well, where, where do I belong in this world? I'm just interpreting this as I go, but like this could be Sisyphus's, Sisyphus's feelings of frustration towards the world or pushing that boulder up and pulling that boulder down. There's a million ways that this can go, even out of context. So let's remove ourselves from the context and just hear that music and imagine what that sounds like to you and how you interpret that. So to me, when I listen to that, it's really heavy in, in, in angst and frustration and trying to be better and having your back against the wall. Things are never good and, and you know, you feel constantly frustrated. Let's keep listening. <laughs>
happen to my chill music? So what's crazy about that is that when we start, there's this real feeling of like, I just, I'm so frustrated, you know? And then we shift to this incredible, like, do you, do you, that sounds like a Bach organ. That's insane. It turns on a dime to irrepressible rage. And that's something that we have to consider when we listen to music like this, especially in Ultra Kill. And I understand the context of Ultra Kill more or less now, right? You're the robot and you're fighting against seven layers of hell, Dante's Inferno type stuff. That is RO violence, right? It's so hard to explain myself because this is so intense. We start off with that pain and suffering. And then we shift into this, like, it really is this like backup up against the wall, but instead of like allowing oneself to be pushed up against the wall, this is like, I will never surrender. I will never give up. I will never let you take me. I'm going to unleash the fury of every single thing that you hate and I'm going to consume you and I'm going to kill you. It's weird because in a way that's like a Bach organ symphony, a Bach organ concerto, Bach, Bach organ cantata, buxtehude, like that's like traditionally classically written organ music combined with this incredible double bass drum, this incredible electric guitar, it's furious. And then we have a recap where we go back to that plaintiveness. And in a way, if you think about Sisyphus, the beginning is the pain and suffering of pushing that boulder. And then as it rolls down, there's this rage and anger towards Hades, towards the gods, right? We remove the context. Now I understand it's unrelated to this context, but but you see what I mean? Boulders rolling down the hill, son of a I don't know why I sounded, son of a bitch. I sounded like my, my grandfather. I don't know why there's that rage there, but that is incredibly profound. And emotionally, it makes us feel like, oh God, there's so much anger in here. And we repress our anger all the time because society says that anger is a bad emotion. It's just no emotion is a bad emotion. It's just how we lean into those emotions. And so I think in this case, Sisyphus is like, he's had it. He's so angry. And there's this outward release in this torrent of rage. And anyway, I'll stop talking. <laughs> Okay, what is this? sounds exactly what it sounds like. Pandemonium is chaos. Pandemonium is like l losing one's mind. And then Sisyphus's intro here is very nefarious. And there's this real like, come at me. I'm ready for you. You've got Minos blood on your hands. Okay, let's see what you can do. And I'm very curious to hear what the Sisyphus fight sounds like. <laughs>
Do you hear that? So to me, this sounds like Sisyphus has something to prove. It's not really a fight in the sense that like he's, his back's not against the wall at all. He's just living his life. And he's like, you know what? You want to come in here and do this? Like, let's go. I'm bored. There's, there's almost like a bored aspect to it. There's an intensity here that's not desperate, which is really interesting. <laughs> That's where some of the pain comes in too, but I'm just picturing Sisyphus throwing fireballs or doing this like jumping, slamming attack. There's this real quality of brute confidence and brute force and brutality. There's a real unrelenting feeling to it, of course, and, and that's very common in all of these ultra kill themes, but also in video games in general. Whenever we have battle themes, they tend to be unrelenting. They tend to have forward propulsion, but what's always so interesting about the ultra kill OST is that we have that forward propulsion, but it's, it's so full of of instrumentation that it actually is incredibly jarring like think about that too like what does that musical gesture mean there's tension there but maybe there is an edge of sadness within Sisyphus. And this fight is to give him something to do to make him feel like his life has meaning, you know? And he's like, what, what's he doing down here? <laughs> that too you have to ask yourself why it goes major why we have that sudden shift and it sounds like it sounds like syphilis is distorting you know what i mean something's not quite right there mentally and there's a shift uh, in in the way that that syphilis feels we have to look at these little things that are occurring in this music that help us inform what the character we're fighting against or what the scene is experiencing emotionally that help us um, create a deeper sense of uh of connection to these characters not just oh the music is awesome but oh the music is amazing because look at the way that this like gets all deformed and freaky at this part like it's really cool <laughs> So concludes the life and times of King Sisyphus. A fitting end to an existence defined by futile struggle. Doomed from the very start. And I don't regret a second word. <laughs> Yeah.
Yeah, but you see that? That's pretty interesting. There's no regret there. It's just like a fight to fight. And there's a real feeling of like, whatever, come at me. I don't, I don't, I don't care. I don't care. What a fascinating arc. This was all P2, I believe. It's really, really dope. And, and what an interesting way to look at these emotions of a character and try to relate to them from our perspective as humans that feel. And, uh, you know, we have to put ourselves in a weird way into Sisyphus's shoes and understand the emotional complexity behind what's occurring, why we're fighting Sisyphus and why these feelings are coursing through us. So there's more Ultra K on the channel. Feel free to check out those videos and uh, I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye.